G'day guys, Mac with the Out Circle, and today I want to talk about this little comment that was posted on the Warhammer 40,000 page and forwarded on to me by one of my salty boys. Uh, obviously, I have a uh, Facebook hangout place, uh, the Salt Mines. I know, hard to believe I'd call it that, right? Uh, where people who watch this channel can come, just hang out and talk shit. Anyway, uh, we also have a Discord. This was posted in the Salt Mines for my attention, and then I've gone and sort of read the article well, not the article, this exact thing on the proper page. Essentially what they're saying is they have a team of around 10 playtesters working on the 9th edition of the game, and throughout the development of the book, they're giving an example. They say, let's say they play four games a week between them over the six weeks of development. They play a total of 120 games in this time, testing as many scenarios, enemies, situations, army builds, etc. as they can, giving all their feedback to the rules team. Um, hmm. Look, I'd say they probably just plucked that out of their ass. They're saying, let's say they play four games a week. Maybe they play ten games a week. We don't know. The thing is, ten playtesters is not a huge amount. And uh, the big thing is, it's coming up on a new edition of the game. I want to know what they've playtested with the new edition. Have they taken all the feedback garnered over the last three years about eighth edition into account? Maybe. Maybe they're just sort of winging it. I don't know. Um, what I do know is this, though. When it comes to codexes, I've, I've been in this game for a long time, guys. Since, I think, 94, I got my first model. 1994. Back in 2nd edition 40k. And I'm at, the, I'm at the age where I can look at a codex now. And I can sort of tell if a unit's good or bad just at a glimpse. I don't need to play test it. I can just go, okay, it has this, 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 and this. Start. I don't see that gelling very well for X, Y, and Z reasons in actual gameplay. So, for instance, some of the things I might look at are, okay, this unit is an elite unit. That means you're going to have less access to it than you would with, say, a troops unit. Therefore... I imagine that even though it might be more powerful individually than a troops unit, it might be a little bit cheaper in cost than what you'd expect to counter for the fact you're going to see less of it on the table. That's something I might take into account. I might also look at the special rules and go, uh, I'll use an example of Space Marines. Space Marines in 7th edition versus Chaos Space Marines in 7th edition. In their respective codexes, there was a one point difference. So, what did that one point equal? Well, the Chaos Space Marines and the Space Marines had the exact same stat line. And then you got to the special rules. And that one point of difference between the two meant that the regular Space Marines had access to not only extra special weapons, such as grav guns, which is something Chaos didn't get, but they had a they shall know no fear, chapter tactics, and combat tactics. And all of these things combined was worth way more than one point, and it was one of my cornerstone criticisms of the way that they wrote those codexes. And yet they kept doing it. Codex after codex after codex, all the way back to 3rd edition. Where Space Marines were Chaos Space Marines, but better. And it's like, if you want to break your balance, that's a great point to start. So when I look to the playtesting, I don't want to be seeing those kind of mistakes made. I feel like those sort of mistakes should be hashed out before it even gets to the playtesters. Uh, the playtesters should be doing a cursory look over of the rules, you know, redlining, highlighting, whatever, different unit stats and saying, hey, this unit needs this or it needs this taken away, etc. Then when they play them, the way they should be making their lists, to me, and this is not how it reads in this, I could be totally wrong, this might be what they're doing, how I would do it, is play a list as intended. So, you know, your two troops, your one HQ, whatever, if it's Horus Heresy, um, your battle line units, HQ, that sort of thing, whatever 8th edition currently is. Play it uh, with the best of intentions as the sort of army list you would see in White Dwarf, with all the uh, less than popular units included. Units that normally you'd be like, eh, I'm not taking that in the game, I think it sucks. Play it with those, see how it performs. Then, break the list. 
look at it, think to yourself, what is the cheesy combination here? And then go down that path. What you should be finding is solutions to the cheese at that point. And there needs to be um, some sort of common sense applied to rules. Um, I'll use Horus Heresy as an example here, slash 7th edition. There's a rule called Skyfire. For those who aren't familiar, it means if you're shooting at a um, at a flying unit, jet, that kind of thing, it's a zooming flyer, if you don't have the Skyfire special rule, your ballistic skill drops to ballistic skill of 1, I think it is. Ballistic skill 1 or 2. Jeez, I, even I'm forgetting now. Uh, but essentially, you're only hitting them on 6s. I'm pretty sure it's ballistic skill 1. If you fire a heavy weapon and you move before you shoot it, then you can only snap shoot with it. Hence, ballistic skill 1 as well. But if you move with a heavy weapon and you fire at a moving flyer, it's a double snap fire and yet it's still the exact same penalty, just you hit on sixes. It should be impossible to hit or something, or perhaps when you shoot at the flyer in the first place it should be easier to hit with a stationary heavy weapon. It is not. Therefore you've got a double up of the exact same rule. Basic stuff like that is what I think should be ironed out in the playtesting of a new edition. Because unless the new edition is a total revolution, you should have a lot of the basic kinks ironed out already, because it's an evolutionary process. You look at the things that didn't really work in the last edition, tweak those, and go from there. Now, obviously, this is two different scenarios. One scenario is the I'm working on a rule set. The other scenario is I'm working on the core codexes within the rule set. And you're going to get two completely different outcomes. Obviously, writing a rule set is a lot easier than writing a codex if it's an evolutionary process because you basically are just again as i said a few sentences ago taking what works tweaking what didn't and printing it the codex is where where the problems are now an edition being good or bad will determine whether or not you play that edition let's be honest i didn't play eighth edition because i despised eighth edition's mechanics ninth edition though i'm positively disposed towards currently because i'm liking a lot of what i'm hearing now, personally, I want to playtest the game for myself and come to my own conclusions. But we'll see. Codexes are, on the other hand, uh, they're the hard one. Because you might decide you enjoy an edition, but then you go into it, you start playing your games, and you realise that you're batting for the wrong team. You have an underpowered force and you're losing a lot of games. That is just unenjoyable. To a degree, you're playing with your friends and stuff. Okay, losing isn't necessarily a bad thing. As long as you're having fun, drinking beers with your mates, whatever, cool. But that's not every game you play, and even then, losing every single game after a while starts to wear a little thin, doesn't it? So, codex balance has to be really on point. When you go into a new edition, the biggest thing that lets James, games Workshop, I just said James Workshop, Games Workshop down every new edition is the codex creep, the balance issues. Because... Someone like Space Marines, good for them. They're going to get updated really quickly because they're the fucking Space Marines. Everyone else, though, they go on the back burner. They go on the FAQ boat where they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll get to you eventually. Here's an FAQ to make your existing codex playable for a little while. And that's pretty much where you will languish. Tyranids are a great example of that. Orcs are a great example of that. Dark Eldar are a great example of that. Whereas, say, Space Marines... Probably Chaos Space Marines, Necrons this edition, they're all going to get updated straight away. So it's like, yeah, well, you know, how's this going to balance out? And, and generally it doesn't. Um, especially when a new unit or feature or a feature of an army has complete and utter revamp going into the new edition. An example of this would be the Necrons. In 5th edition, they were already considered to be a broken army. In 6th edition, it got a lot worse because all of these flyers they had as dedicated transports and uh, heavy support choices, they all got these new flyer rules where it turned them from being essentially land speeders into flyers that you can only hit on a 6 and they had all these crazy rules and essentially they became indestructible. The Necrons, they didn't crash and burn like other factions and it turned them from being an already overpowered list into a super overpowered list thanks to those minor changes. 
this is a huge deal, and I worry about the same ha thing happening going into a ninth edition. Now, what are the approaches you can take to remedy this? Well, you can create new codexes for everyone, which is what they did with the index system of the last edition. However, with the index system, they missed a lot of stuff. So not only did they rush it out the door, but they did a terrible job of it because they didn't include things like bikes for White Scars characters, for instance. So you left, you know, you left in a bad situation there. And what if your index is the only thing you've got to go off for months or even years before your faction finally gets visited by Games Workshop and given a codex? So codexes to me is where the playtesting really, really matters. And as I say, new edition, old edition, new codex, old codex, whatever. You need to play the game as intended, and you've also got to play it with a bit of cheese. And I don't just mean a bit of cheese, I mean a lot of cheese. Figure out what those really overpowered combos are and stomp them on the head before you print the codex. You don't need to play 50,000 games to understand what works or doesn't work. If you play 10 games of the faction, you get a pretty good grasp of how that faction operates. And games of 9th edition 40k, depending on the points level, they could be really quick to run. It's like Horus Heresy, for example. If I'm playing a thousand point zone Mortalis game, that's going to be over in like 40 minutes. How many of those do you reckon I could pump out in a week, as well as keeping notes on the battles, filming it if I want at certain points, or having a voice recorder where I can give myself verbal cues as we go along? I can pump out a crap word of those. However, if I'm going to be playing 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 point games, yeah, okay, and that's going to be significantly harder to get a decent amount of games out of. And the interesting thing with the number of four games per week, and again, I think that's just a number they've plucked for the community page uh, on Facebook. For all we know, they could be playing 20 games a day. I think the community just used it as an example number, which is why I'm not putting too much uh, emphasis on it. But those of us who've played competitive Warhammer before, we play, what, three games a day of competitive? 2,000 points, for example, was a very common number, or 1,800 points back in the day. Three games like that. And it drained you, but you got through them. And the thing is, with those games, well, you were doing it uh, for some sort of prize. Whether it was um, the ability to turn around to your peers and say, I'm better than you at Toy Soldiers, or whether it was an actual physical prize, it might be garnered, recognition, respect, I don't know what, you know. Me these days, I don't really play events for those reasons, but I did back in the day. And so they were more stressful because you were trying your best to win. That's not something you need to do when you're playtesting. When you're playtesting, you're looking to see what mechanics do and don't work. Therefore, you could take um, a, a list and make it a gimmicky list with a bunch of weird random units that utilize a lot of weird random rules just to see what those rules do. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose, you're trying to see what the rules do, what the implications of them are. So that's the sort of stuff I'm looking for when it comes to this playtesting. Now, do I think they're going to do a good job of the playtesting? Mm, I'm very iffy on this because Games Workshop is, is farming it out to people. That's fine. But I believe last time they essentially took the notes of the playtesters, uh, rolled them up into a ball and burnt them and said, we've already decided how we're going to do this and um, we've already sent the stuff off to the printers. I could be wrong on that, but that's what I heard. And I worry about them doing the same thing here, getting a lot of feedback which says we need to go in a particular direction, and then them going, oh, no, we've decided we want to go in this direction, especially, especially if the vampires over at marketing get involved in it. Because marketing will trump good game design. And I've had people turn to me recently, again, and say, but you're not in game design. You wouldn't know how to do it, da 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 Look, I've been playing this game since 1994. There are people working for Games Workshop who are straight out of university who've never played war games in their life, and this is just a job for them, and they're involved in game design. Who do you think knows more about it? Okay, you don't need to be employed in something in order to have a say on it, or have a good inclination as to what should be done. For instance, you don't need to be a chef to know when the food you're being served is terrible. Correct? If it gives you the squirts, that's something you're going to remember, and you don't need a doctor to come along and tell you that you've got the squirts, right? 
Well, same thing with Warhammer. If I see something that I think is questionable or poor game design, we're going to call it out on it. And I guess that's the point of today. We're talking about what I do and don't want to see. And what I want to see is the weird bullshit rules. The things that you look at and straight away you're like, well, this is utterly broken. And we all know these units. It happens every codex, every release. Something comes out and you just take one glance at it and you're like, that is overpowered. Or maybe it's underpowered. Maybe it's a 5th edition Tyranid Pyrovor. Those things were terrible. Maybe, however... It is something like Tyrant Siege Terminators in the Horus Heresy. Oh, a whole unit of, on release of uh, 10 Cataphracty Terminators, all armed with Psycho Missile Launchers and the ability to split fire on their leader for 495 points in the Elites. And if you took a certain right of war, it made them troops, and you could make your whole army out of Cyclone Missile Launcher equipped Terminators, and you could have... 15 of them for 15, uh, sorry, you could have 30 of them for 1,500 points. Yeah, that was broken. These things do happen. Um, they fix that by moving them from the elites to the heavy support slot. So then it was like, okay, you can still have them, but you can be paying for other stuff in order to take them. And think of the stuff that's now going to be ranged against you. Those sort of things are what change a game. And so when it comes to 9th edition, as I said, I'm cautiously optimistic. I do want to know how they're playtesting the game. I'd love to see some behind-the-scenes footage of how they playtest. Because I am 95% certain the directive for playtesting that they've probably been given, and the way they seem to do it in-house, is... Hey, we advertise this game based on battalions, battle forces, whatever. Uh, start collecting boxes. So we want the list to be themed around battalions, star collecting boxes, etc. All that shit that's really overpowered over there, yeah, ignore that, because that's not what people are probably going to buy straight out the gate. What they don't expect the people to do is exactly that. Another great example of this would be the Iron Hands. I believe it was the Iron Hands in 8th edition 40k that had the unkillable Leviathan. Uh, they had some crazy bonuses, and people by day one had worked them out. Well... Those kind of people, those cheese fiends, these high-end tournament players, probably good people to get along to say, hey, you know, what do you think is broken in this book? Circle it, give it to us as feedback. And if that's the approach they take, I think you can get a really, really good edition of 40k. If they don't do that, well, it doesn't matter how good the core rule set is for 9th edition 40k, if your codexes end up fucked, you're going to end up fucked. So anyway, that's my random thoughts on the behind-the-scenes playtesting. Obviously, it's a bit all over the shop, this one, but it's a really, uh, it's a spider's web of a subject. So many different paths you could go down when it comes to core unit design principles and gameplay design principles. But this is the sort of mini-strand approach I've decided to take just for the purposes of this video. Anyway. Back with the Outer Circle, thank you all for watching. As always, thoughts and feedback in the comments below. Uh, and see you next time, I guess.